Well, I grew up in Stockholm, in Sweden. I am from a place called Stocke in Norway. My mom, she was evaluating and performing surveys. My dad is an electrician. So they had sort of normal jobs. They were not into music or anything. Classical music came to me in, in high school. And I started to have guitar lessons and then later on singing lessons. I started to play the violin and later went on to viola. Even though I, I did not want to study classical singing, my teacher was very clear saying that studying singing includes everything. So, um, yeah, she gave me an aria and I... It was very, very far from who I was at the time. I was singing Eva Cassidy. I sang like memory from Cats. <laughs> So I was like, okay, this is too far <laughs> from each other. Of course, I also didn't know what to do with my voice, so I started to take lessons. And I didn't think it would bring anyone any enjoyment or anything. When I was 17 years old, I auditioned for the choir and got the second highest score of my school and was totally shocked. And then I started in a choir later on, and uh, it was so nice to sing with other people and to, to do this music. And, you know, it was a whole new world for me opening up. After that, I couldn't let go. I had to continue searching for what it is to have a voice and to use it. I started then studying as a mezzo-soprano, and I think singing became a part uh, of my life where I could express some things that I couldn't really express elsewhere. It's like uh, one of those gym sessions where you boost out everything, and when you're done, you're like, oh, I don't have any problems in my life. And then a couple of minutes later, they appear. I was admitted to a summer opera studio, and I was singing mezzo repertoire at that time. I had already made plans that I would switch, so I had to rebuild my voice from scratch. It was a huge process of constantly forgiving yourself, I think. But at the same time doing your best and having fun, because that's very important. And then I was a pure lyric soprano, and um, maybe a few people could hear that uh, there was something more dramatic lurking behind. And of course, with every big role I took on, my voice grew. And then in year 2000, my debut at the Metropolitan Opera. When I moved to Copenhagen, my teacher then sort of told me that I was a soprano. And, and that's when, when Strauss became a big part of my repertoire, because the songs is in the right place for my voice. And then quite early also came Ariadne because that was sort of lower range-ish compared to some of his other repertoire. I love singing Ariadne because the music is beautiful. The prologue offers you all these funny things and the prima donna and you get to have a lot of fun on stage. And then on the second half is full on drama and, um, and sadness for an hour and 20 or something like that. But I waited long with the most dramatic Strauss part, the Elektra, because I had heard it's a killer part. It demands physically, emotionally, vocally so much. Elektra is a woman obsessed by her wish to take revenge for her murdered father. So it's a very, very complicated character. The younger sister, Chrysotomis, is the one that wants to have a normal family and children. Chrysotomis is, is, of course, trying to get Elektra to listen, but Elektra is in a completely different state of mind. It's so intense. The opera doesn't take more than just under two hours. But it's just so compact. It's like he has written a long, long opera and then he just figured out, no, I can squeeze this into two hours. I am on stage as Electra the entire time. There is no second <laughs> to, to breathe or think. But also, usually I'm filled with a euphoric feeling that <laughs> I made it tonight again. <laughs> I think Strauss, um, there is something about his 
endless opportunities that I feel lies in in his music and in his roles. It's insane in a way that I get to do this repertoire that all these great singers has done before me. But then I also think, what a gift! What a gift it is for me to to do that today. I don't aim for being uh, groundbreaking, twisting Strauss upside down. That's never been my mission. My mission has been to try to do it the best with my voice. That's all I want. At one point, I, I actually thought that, okay, when I've learned this dramatic repertoire, it will become some sort of routine and I can just do it. But no, it's an emotional investment. Every single evening, something new is created which is given to us artists to explore.